environmental science subject code triple three module seven lesson twenty six environmental ethics and Gandhian approach. Hello learners, welcome to environmental science course for senior secondary level of NIOS. We begin our journey from origin of earth and evolution of environment, its biotic and abiotic component, how we progress such so much at the cost of environmental degradation. Now we have to conserve these precious wealth for our future generation. This lesson is based on environmental ethics and Gandhian approach because Gandhiji has had an ethical approach towards environmental protection at a time when there was no sign of degradation of earth's environment as we experience today. This is lesson 26 of module 7 is on environmental ethics and includes Gandhian thoughts. I am Nilam Gupta, course coordinator of environmental science. Welcome you in this program. This picture is of Mahatma Mohan Das Karamchand Gandhi, father of our nation, India. He helped to free us from British colonial rule with his non-violent approach. So the objectives of the program are to understand meaning of ethics, environmental ethics and its need, approaches to develop environmental ethics, development of love and respect for earth, physical resources and life on earth, harmonious living with nature, intervene with religious beliefs and traditional practices, awareness of eco-friendly traditional festivals, social customs, beliefs and values, environmental protection movements and public participation, corporate ethics. For this discussion, we have with us Dr. Bharti Sarkar, retired associate professor, Maitre College, University of Delhi. She has had long association with NIOS. Welcome you, madam. Thanks, Neelam. Good morning, everybody. Namaskar, all viewers. Today, we are going to discuss a very important topic, and that is environmental ethics. Now, but before we begin the talk, I, we must first know what is meant by ethics. Ethics is a field of philosophy. Philosophy is a discipline of study and ethics means those values and morals which are required so that a person can make out whether his action is right or wrong. Now, by looking at one's own actions, and trying to do what is right and not doing what is wrong, one gets a good conduct. So ethics is really morals and values that stop a person from doing wrong and progress by doing the right. And then what is environmental ethics? That's the ethics related to environment, which gives us all for our survival. And what kind of ethics is this? This kind of ethics is when everyone is aware how to treat the environment from which we get ingredients of our own survival. Now, environmental ethics, therefore, is a relationship between human beings and their natural environment. When we talk of environmental ethics, we find that there can be ethical issues which are all concerned with the benefit to human beings. So it is human being centered and therefore it is called anthropocentric. Anthropos means humans. But Gandhiji didn't believe in anthropocentric ethics. He believed in loving all animals all those plants, organism, everything in nature which is shared with us on this planet Earth, which is the only green planet, which is the only planet which can sustain life. Now, the third kind of ethics is ecocentric. Ecology, you know, is the study of environment. So, ecocentric ethics is related to the treatment human beings meet out to the environment. How do they take care of the environment and see that it is forever sustainable? You can see on the monitor Gandhiji's very beautiful portrait 
and you can see what is written. It's a quotation by him which says, Earth provides everything that is needed for survival. And therefore, we, there is no place for greed. So he says that Earth provides everything for human need or need for anyone at all, but not for greed. Meaning what? That do not disturb the environment and do harm to it. And we all know that Gandhiji believed that all humans must take the responsibility of taking care of earth. Therefore, he wanted humans to take care of all those living beings who share the earth with, with us. In other words, his approach was biocentric and it was also ecocentric because he wanted humans to take responsibility uh, to take care of all the physical attributes as well as its biotic potential, its biotic um, life um, on earth. Now, environmental ethics, when we talk about, I said that it is the relationship humans have with the environment. Now, how do relationships develop? Relationship is really a life skill, a skill, an ethical skill by which a human being ought to respect, understand, accept and appreciate anyone, be they human beings, be they the pets that the uh, humans keep, be they the wild animals or anyone at all and even the environment which gives us so much. Environment really helps us survive. What does environment give? Can you live without respiring even for a single second? No, no living being can survive even for a second without the oxygen. Who provides the oxygen? Oxygen is provided by the environment and we get it from the air, the aquatic animals get it from the water in which they live. Environment gives us all the food to eat. We eat so, uh, vegetables, we grow our own vegetables, we grow our own crops to eat. Now, where do they grow? They grow on earth and therefore we have to cherish that and we have to think that we have to respect the earth which gives us food to eat. Food gives us energy and we cannot live even without food. We cannot go hungry. The environment also provides material for making a shelter in which we live and medicines and colorful things. You know, so many colors come from herbs. So many medicines come from herbs and plants or fruits of plants or seeds for plant. And the best part about the environment, you know, viewers, is that, that we cannot ever finish the ingredients it provides. We cannot ever finish the oxygen. We cannot ever finish the food. We cannot ever finish all the things that it gives. Why? Because there is an ecological balance, which is natural and which is always found in nature. And there are what are known as biogeochemical cycles. Now, if we use up the oxygen, it again comes back into nature for us to use again and again and again. If you were to see these pictures carefully, you will see how oxygen that is used up by living beings again comes back into nature, into air, into water because plants are able to give it back to nature through how it makes its food through photosynthesis. You can also see that there is the nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen is needed by the plants and how even when it is used up, it comes back into nature. Nature replenishes it again and again and again for years and years so that all living beings can survive 
and carry on their duties. Now then we have the carbon cycle and we have the water cycle. But water is now becoming very scarce, you know, we cannot use the salty water, sea water we cannot use and fresh water ought to remain there. And from the water cycle again you can see how, you know, rains come, replenish the earth with water, then it goes back through evaporation into the clouds and comes back again to make it simple. Now here you can see all these four natural biochemical cycles which replenish the earth with all the things that we need for our own survival. So where is the concern? Why is the earth not able to replenish it at a rate that we are consuming all its ingredients? all its components, that is because humans are growing and growing in population, that does not matter. But they have to take care of the environment to see that all, everything as nature works through its biogeochemical cycles and through its own manner of replenishing all that is used up, is kept up, is sustained. And Human activities do not interfere and stop that replenishment. Therefore, now there is the, a very big worry. And what is this worry all about? It is the worry about future because what humans have done is they have overexploited the environment for their own needs. Gandhiji, let me tell you viewers, lived a very, very simple life. And when you lead a simple life, you don't exploit anything. You don't illegally do things like overmining, like uh, causing global warming through use of petrol and fossil fuels and too much. Overexploitation means overuse of everything. Therefore, you see overexploitation of resources environmental resources have made them very scarce. Today we say don't waste water. Why? Because water has become scarce. Today we say don't cut forests, don't take away all the wood, don't make place for your own fields and your own shelter, etc. Think of the forests. Why? Because forests are the carbon sink. Plants take up carbon dioxide that is released into air. And when too much of carbon dioxide accumulates in nature, it causes what is known as global warming. Viewers, you have all learnt about it and it is discussed such a lot that everyone is familiar with this word global warming. And what has global warming done now? You can all see how the climate is changed. When it ought to be winter, it is not winter in time or it is such a lot of uh, lowering of temperature that it becomes pitifully uncomfortable for human beings. Then climate has changed and we can see it. Therefore, we have done this only by polluting the environment. We have by use of too much of fossil fuels, by burning up forests. What have we done? We have introduced too much carbon dioxide into the air and we have cut the forests. So who is going to take back this carbon dioxide so that air is pure again? So two activities of humans, one over exploitation of natural resources and two, polluting the environment. We all know that plastic is lying all around. We know that it is non-biodegradable and it does a lot of harm by just lying there. Cows eat them with other things and die. Many um, uh, animals, if you have read the book Silent Spring, we know how the eggs of the birds have now become so fragile that 
they don't uh, you know have enough tough shells and when they are incubated they just crush and collapse and therefore a new life is put an end to. So all these things are due to these two activities and we have to now become very vigilant that we do not continue doing this to nature any longer. Now Gandhian approach, Mahatma Gandhi, the father of our nation said a long, long time ago that the future depends on what you do today. Today, if you go on spoiling the environment, you will leave nothing for your children and your grandchildren. But today, if you become vigilant and you, I have put two quotations here and I've also put Gandhiji's spectacles. I think by now you all know about the Swachhata Abhiyan and you know the logo is Swachh Bharat, which is inscribed on the two lenses of the glasses that Gandhiji used to use. He believed in Swachhata long, long time ago. Swachhata simply means cleaning your surroundings. If you clean your surroundings, then you are cleaning your environment, your immediate environment. And but you have to all be aware that environment is large and all part of it needs to take to, uh, you know, to be taken care of by human beings. You can take care of anything when you respect its utility, when you respect its existence, when you love it when you appreciate what it does for you and you are able to live in harmony with the environment and that is what is the Gandhian approach and that is what is the environmental ethics that we need to follow. Now in the past there have been many examples of Gandhian approach to environmental ethics. Now we know that from time immemorial you know, people worship certain trees. There are what are known as sacred groves, which people worship. People, you know, try and cultivate plants which give them food, color, etc. For example, turmeric gives a yellow color, pomegranate peel, what is called anar in Hindi also gives color. The hibiscus uh, gives colors and there are so many flowers from which organic uh, colors are obtained and they are used to print or to make anything. Now animals have also been worshipped. You know we know that our Sherawali or what we call Shakti, the powerful embodiment uh, in uh, our, uh, you know, uh, idols like Durga, they are on a vehicle which is the lion and we therefore respect the lion. Similarly, there are other, you know, goddesses which human beings themselves believe in and the their vehicles are also animals. So animals also ought to be respected. Then there are plants, you know, like the banyan tree, which is worshipped. On Nag Panchami day, the serpents are given milk and they are worshipped. This is what is respect to animals. This is what is a biocentric approach. Now, how can you respect the environment? You can respect the uh, environment by respecting all its, its, its physical nature, the water, the soil, the air, and the living beings found on earth. So if you respect plants like the tulsi, which we really do, we call it a sacred plant, and the banyan or the bird tree. We use coconuts, you know, whenever we buy a new car or a vehicle, we always take it to the temple nearby and break a coconut 
it is supposed to uh, you know bring us good luck and that is worshipping and respecting similarly we use banana leaves we use bananas and we have so many ours is a country which is a beautiful country which is has lot of diversity and lot of religions and cultures and all religions and cultures believe in respecting animals and plants now there are bishnois in rajasthan you know who regularly worship the khejri trees these are just examples to show how by you know taking inspiration from gandhi ji's approach towards environmental ethics people have been following certain rituals and which are all part of environmental ethics now you might have heard about the chipko movement you know in the uttarakhand in the uttaranchal region once trees had to be cut and how did the women there save those trees this movement was initiated by chandi prasad bhat and sundar lal bahuguna and you know who did it the ladies of the villages nearby they came and hugged the trees and when people came to cut the trees they were unable to do it now that is one way of respecting the trees of uh, thinking of taking care of them then you must have heard about bindeshwar pathak who has you know devised such a good method by which uh, you know our everyday excreta can be used up to make manure and he has devised a method by which the even the waste from the body can be used leave alone waste that we produce as garbage and which is such a lot now you must have uh, heard in delhi you see now what are, what they are doing is the landfill all the garbage which is collected in the landfill is being used for laying on the roads you might have heard about baba amte and medha patkar who all uh, you know fought for uh, uh, not letting the government have a hydroelectric um, you know arrangement on the narmada river because that spoiled the lives of so many people who were there and they are very well known for the narmada bachao andolan now what is this other than gandhi an approach to environmental ethics many ngos we know there's one called nirmalya there are many others now now some use the non biodegradable material and the garbage to make artifacts and i know that baba amte's children in pune and places nearby they have collected the plastics lying there use them wash them clean them and stuffed them in pillows the silent valley project on the western ghats is also well known where you know there are environmental activists who saw to it that government does not spoil the western ghats which you, you know has unique biodiversity not found anywhere else kinds of frogs the kinds of insects that are found on the western ghats are not found anywhere else now if we spoil them then all that biodiversity will also be lost you know there are our lawyers who also believe in the gandhian approach to environmental ethics and they have actually filed cases or litigations which are of public interest and for example uh, mr m c mehta he filed a public interest litigation and saved the taj mahal from being completely polluted and its marble absolutely uh, you know ruined from all the effluence and the toxic gases that were emanating from the mathura refinery and he saw to it that it does not happen why because taj mahal is just one of our heritage buildings it's one of our one of our symbols it is one of the uh, monuments which is well known all over the 
world and lots of tourists come to see Taj Mahal and that Taj Mahal to be spoilt by effluents and toxic gases from a refinery? Not at all. MC Mehta saw to it that it is not done and that the project was stopped. Also, you see in Delhi, we know that the Delhi government at that time really brought about a very big change. Um, even today, we see some people, you know, and the, who are just driving a motorbike with so much of smoke coming out. Now, we have to be aware of this, of the bad effects of polluting gases and we have to do our bit, which I'll come to after a little while. So, what I was trying to tell you that even this small move of using CNG, the instead of petrol and diesel, which produce more pollutants than CNG in public vehicles, so that when they ply, they leave the air there pure. Also, you see, corporate houses have taken the responsibility of looking after many places. They sponsor cleaning up of places. They sponsor, you know, taking care and maintaining little gardens on the roads, on the crossroads, and on the islands on the roads. They do their bit. Then we all know that organic farming today has become the order of the day. Many agriculturists no longer use pesticides. They use the methods of biological control, uh, which are absolutely non-polluting. They don't use pesticides. They don't use chemical fertilizers. They use manure. They use, and you must be seeing so many advertisements on the television also, which show how even human waste can be converted into very useful manure for growing our crops. In fact, long ago, some 20 years back, there, there was a center in Kanyakumari, which is the you know, the uh, lowermost tip of our country. And they had adopted villages and saw to it that there is use of biogas. And they, in their guest house and all places, all their toilets had such a method, such a device that the excreta could be used to produce that biogas. So that's again another steps, step towards Gandhian approach to environment health ethics. Now, we have talked about so many people who have you know, taken inspiration from Gandhiji and did their bit. Now, we have to do our bit. The students have to do their bit. The schools have to make it absolutely compulsory for the children to see that they don't litter the grounds at all, that the surroundings are clean, they, that they take care uh, to grow plants in the campus of the schools. Children can also learn from there and children can learn to appreciate the beauty of gardens. They can learn to respect animals. Now, even uh, you see so many times children throw stones at monkeys, etc. But I am sure as you know, our children get to know that they are also living beings and we have a responsibility to respect them. They will not do it. And who can do it best? The teachers and the school authorities can see to it that children learn to respect the environment and that is the, the ethics that they have to adopt. And what happens when they grow up? They have already got into a habit of taking care of environment and they can spread the awareness everywhere. You know, the best awareness comes in a family from one's children the, and then it moves on to the community. And I'm certain that if all of us do our bit, we can take care of the environment 
as was envisaged by our father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi. And that we use the Gandhian approach to do it. So viewers, I'm certain you will all think about the environment, your surroundings and the environment at large and see to it that the environment remains sustainable, that no action of yours either deplete the resources that it provides nor pollute it and make it dirty. That's the Gandhian approach and we have to all adopt the Gandhian approach to environmental ethics. Thank you so much. Thank you Dr. Bharti Sarkar for sharing information related to environmental ethics and Gandhian approach. Dear learners, before we wrap up, we would like to recap the main points, that is, what you have learned. The planet Earth is the only habitable space for humans, and ethics is a principle that we use to decide whether an action is good or bad, right or wrong. It is a branch of philosophy which deals with morals and values. Environmental ethics is the part of philosophy which consider the repeat, which considers the ethical relationship between human beings and natural environment. We must learn to respect nature, all living creatures and remember that our resources are finite. Nature and environment were given importance from Rig Vedic periods onward. Traditional practices have been environmental friendly. Activities such as growing plants, visit of natural park and centuries, creating stories or poems or plays on, plays on nature should be included in a school curriculum. Modern day indiscriminate use of resources and increasing pollution loads have led to dangerous results thus the need or thus the need to inculcate environmental ethics. Gandhian philosophy promotes the concept of coexistence with nature. Dear learners, this is all about environmental ethics and Gandhian approach. We will come again to meet you with a new program of environmental science. Thank you.